another episode of Crypto Grownups. Today we're talking about the EOS settlement with the SEC. EOS maker Block One must pay $24 million in penalties for conducting an unregistered security sale. This is this uh, has been an ongoing uh, case, and uh, a lot of people are talking about how uh, they got off light that after raising four point one billion, um, having to pay twenty four million is zero point zero zero five eight percent of the initial raise. Now, let's be fair. The SEC operates in the U.S., and that was what was raised globally, allegedly raised globally. So it's actually a bigger percentage of a fine if you think about it relative to, to U.S. Um, citizens, U.S. investors. Um, now, going through it, um, you, you, you read um, some interesting stuff about how this settlement only applies to the sale of the original ERC-20 token. So it doesn't apply to EOS today. So EOS continues to not be a security. That means that it's going to continue to be on exchanges as long as exchanges want it to be on exchanges, right? It's going to be up to their discretion. The SEC has not called EOS a security. Block One has also responded. The SEC has simultaneously granted Block One an important waiver so that Block One will not be subject to certain ongoing restrictions that would usually apply with settlements of this type. Block One believes the SEC's granting of this waiver evidences Block One's continuing commitment to compliance and best practices in the United States and globally. Now, not too long ago, just last week, Virginia also gave $600,000 as a grant to EOS. So if you look at the trend, you know, EOS was, uh, you know, isn't uh, hated. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's liked. It's, it's one of those uh, bigger, bigger players. And, um, you know, you, you gotta look at the trend. You gotta see what was happening. So the fact that the SEC didn't come down hard, you know, you can look at that and say, okay, they, they see that there's, uh, risk to to doing something more severe right uh you can tell that there was some elegance in this uh, decision right because if the if the token had been called a security well that would have forced the listings that would have been pretty bad for the entire crypto market so the sec thinking about how things um affect everything um is is a net positive now I'm, I'm pulling up a coin market cap real fast to see what the effect has been and you know everything's kind of up but eos up six percent uh, on the same day as this you know that that shows that um you know this was a bullish right a bullish event this was a net positive for for eos it, it took out some of the risk uh, involved on what was going to happen and the uh the fine's pretty small. Now, I think uh, there's a few people who have, you know, there's been a lot of discussion on crypto Twitter. So many people coming out with their takes. Uh, my favorite take is Marco Santori's. Um, he's, uh, I believe, uh, chief legal officer at blockchain. Um, so I'll share this uh, in the comments. Uh, I've highlighted a few parts where he, he specifically says, so is EOS a security now? It is no more and no less a security than it was yesterday. Very important the way he says that. I love lawyerese. It's basically saying it wasn't classified as a security yesterday. It's not classified as a security today. Um, he agreed. He highlighted also, again, this that it's $24 million for U.S. investors. You got to think about the ratios there. So, you know, it's, 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 it's a significant fine in SEC land. If you think about how much was raised in the U.S., um, will exchanges delist it? No, he doesn't think they will. Um, and I agree. This uh, this actually, you know, uh, shows that the uh, the SEC is kind of thinking about things in a bigger picture. If they wanted it to have been delisted, they wouldn't have classified the ERC twenty token. They would have classified EOS itself. Um, I also like that uh, he did highlight how uh, 
they said that they tried to do everything they could to prevent U.S. purchasers like block U.S. IPs. But uh, then they also purchased a billboard in Times Square. <laughs> so, so yeah, you know, there, there, there were things that could have been done differently. I think that would have made the arguments a little different. Um, now, uh, someone had brought up a, a previous ICO, Protostar, who they just, SEC had just closed them down. Same thing as Munchie. Um, in this article I found, it's interesting. They compare the, the language that Protostar has and then how EOS coming out soon after, this is a 2017 article, um, EOS had, had language that's, you know, made sure to protect them even more. So saying things, the EOS tokens do not have any rights, uses, purpose, attributes, functionalities, like completely stripping it of, of, of the expectations of a security. So, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of these earlier ICOs that just got shut down and now today we're seeing, you know, the fine, like that's what's going to happen. You know, as time passes, uh, Everybody's going to be able to dance the dance a lot better because they, they've got this. The bigger your legal team, the easier it's going to be to be able to, to nuance your way through. Um, two other takes I like. Larry Cermax. I loved uh, how uh, he brought up Blockstack, right? Like this is an example of uh, a raise that was fully compliant. They raised $23 million. They spent $2 million to comply with all the regulations, which was 8.7% of their total raise. And they can't be listed on cryptocurrency exchanges, which hurts their liquidity. Um, great thread on talking about this. And, and, and really, you know, you, you got you to gotta think about that, like how it doesn't level the playing field that, you know, one person kind of goes through and just does what they want and, um, you know, ask for, for uh, you know, just... Uh, act and ask for forgiveness later, you know, don't ask for permission, ask for forgiveness later. So this is a good take, good piece of information to think about here. And then I also like Eric Voorhees um, take on things. He, uh, he, he mentions again that the interesting thing is that this is about the pre-product pre-launch that's a security and not the actual product. Um, and I don't know, I feel uncomfortable to be honest um about this um because you know it's not like i mean is it clear cut do we now understand what's going to be the difference between the one versus the other uh, i don't know um but another thing he mentions and, and i think that this is very telling is that look you've got all of the crypto world kind of upset about this and that's how i'm going to kind of wrap this up like this isn't new right we've always seen that the people with more money get to have better legal teams, get better, you know, outcomes. Um, it reminds me of a movie called Abacus. I'm going to link it, which is about a really small Chinese bank that uh, got attacked by uh, the SEC back in the 2008 financial crisis. It was called Small Enough to Jail in comparison to Too Big to Fail, right? Like the Too Big to Fail ones, EOS is at that stage right now, right? It's 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 got a very large market cap. It's very important in the crypto world. And they've got a huge legal team. So, like, th this isn't news to us, right? And, and it shouldn't be news to us. Um, you know, we should be more mad at whenever banks get away with stuff. That's that's really our our duty as a crypto world. Um, I think this is a net positive in that we can also see that the SEC is thinking about crypto in the long haul, right? And and tiptoeing around um, how it will affect the investors and holders and exchanges. So. I think it's a net positive in that aspect. Um, I don't love, obviously, that, um, you know, what Larry mentioned, that you've got some guys following the rules and, and they don't benefit. That, that's, that's the way of the world always, right? Like, we've, we've seen that since, uh, you know, before crypto. But I really can't stress this enough. As a crypto community, it's important for us to kind of look at things holistically and, like, really focus on the parts that we don't like outside of crypto and not necessarily the parts uh, that are happening in crypto to be like super, um, super critical of them. So yeah, EOS, well done guys. Okay, everybody take care. That's a wrap, talk to you later, ciao.